Martin. Uh, so today we're going to do a quick, a very quick run through on, I just want to define what in the heck is document automation and document assembly software? What does it do? What are the benefits? Um, why isn't everybody doing it? And of course, if it were easy, everybody would be doing it. Um, and hopefully answer some questions you might have about how this whole thing works. Uh, so skip the introduction. I'm Baron, a partner with Affinity Consulting, as previously mentioned, and I am an automation geek, and I've been doing that for a very long time, 22 years now. Um, anyway, let's let's to frame this discussion. Let's talk about um, how people draft documents. So the most popular way, by a long shot, in law firms and legal departments worldwide, is to find an existing document that's pretty close to the next one you need, save it as a new file name, and start making changes to it. And I get that that's better than starting from a blank page. Uh, you would obviously want to capitalize on your content you've already created, but there are a host of issues with this particular approach. Um, and here are, the, here are the problems. Number one, it relies on somebody's memory. It's either your memory or, or a support staff person's memory. And um, our memories fail us, as we all know, unless you're just a, you know, a photographic memory genius, and I'm not. So, you know, a lot of times I can't find the document that I'd like to start with, even though I'm absolutely certain that I drafted it previously, or I can't find the provision I need, you know, this, this happens. And a lot of times if a lawyer simply gathers information and hands it off to a support staff person, they don't even know how that whole process plays out. And if the support staff person isn't there to handle it, then they simply can't generate documents. Another thing that's very common <clears throat> is you left something out that wasn't in the original document. Obviously, if I open up some old document and start making changes to it, there's nothing in there to remind me to add stuff that isn't there already. Um, so th that's a problem that uh, can often bite you. Even more common is to leave something in that doesn't belong. And I think anybody that reviews documents on a regular basis, certainly you routinely come across provisions that seemingly have nothing to do with the particular case or document that you're reviewing. And th those are almost always uh, leave-ins that were left there by accident. Um, there's also, you know, you do the search and replace and you did the he, she's and the him, hers, but you forgot the his, her, and you left in an incorrect pronoun, or you left in a party name, or you left in some reference to the prior document that you started with, and it can be embarrassing and some sometimes substantive. Then, depending on your practice area, the worst part of this is that potentially the document you started with could have been negotiated with opposing counsel. So, you know, if it's a real estate document of any kind or a settlement agreement or, I mean, you name it, um, probably uh, it was traded back and forth with opposing counsel and you had to make some compromises to that document to reach a point that everybody was willing to sign it. And unless you can remember every single little thing you made, it's really hard to take that document back to neutral. So, you know, there's a bunch of little compromises that were made and all of those could be landmines for your client and you might not be able to find all of them. So just fundamentally, you know, this this whole approach has some obvious problems with it. And I just, I, this is just, a, I teach a lot of continuing legal education. Um, and I, I was speaking for a, a law school in Alabama and, and they, uh, they offer CLE at this particular law school. And this was the contract that I signed. Um, they, I, I wasn't allowed to smoke, drink, uh, and all of my musicians, singer, and other personnel had to um, wear uh, covering attire because the lewd and sexually explicit uh, uniforms they all were looking forward to wearing, we we couldn't wear. It was really sad. Um, but you know, these are the kind of things where they obviously didn't even care, probably that a CLE has nothing to do with musicians and singers in most cases, I would assume. Uh, but they left it in anyway, and it just seemed uh, kind of sad, really. Um, but if you keep doing this and you keep starting with old documents and create new ones from it, you're going to have little, like all the words that you see highlighted here and letters, they're, the words are spelled correctly, but they're the wrong words. And so your spell checker is perfectly happy with that, but it's the documents wrong. And then sometimes folks that, that dictate will tell me that they're immune to this problem because they dictate. But I find that most people who dictate actually read documents into the voice recorder. So to the extent you're reading old documents into the voice recorder, then you're subject to the same limitations. What is the first great leap forward uh, from that? You know, so this is really the first takeaway. Um, stop using old documents and recycling them. 
And just as an aside, um, I get email documents all the time that are absolute train wrecks because they have been recycled and recycled and recycled and reused and reused and copied and pasted and converted and converted for years, sometimes decades. And if you had a way to look, I and, and oddly enough, just today, I got a I, I got a, um, a a word document. It was a, a, a construction loan agreement, 118 pages long a construction loan agreement, and they were having terrible problems with it, and um, they couldn't figure out what was wrong. And like I could easily tell, it was using a feature that hasn't been present in Word since 2003. So, um, so, and, and the document was probably even older than that. The document was probably from around 2000 or earlier. So, you know, it's easily could have been 18 years old and 19 years old, and it's been used and used and used. So it was no wonder, like they said, we just can't, we have to use this as a template, but it's, the formatting simply doesn't work. We can't get it to do anything we want, and it's always a nightmare. What's wrong? Well, <laughs> one of the things that was wrong is it had been reused for 19 years. And, and who knows what had been copied and pasted into it. There's pieces and parts that didn't make any sense. The paragraph numbering didn't work. It started over randomly. It switched formats. There was all sorts of errors, right? That's what happens. So the idea of a gold standard is to create this one thing that you go back to every time that you update and keep current and which is set up correctly from a word perspective so that it responds correctly to formatting. In this particular screenshot you see, um, what I liked about the way this firm did this <clears throat> is they added a lot of narrative into the document. They explained every single provision had a little commentary above it that said, here's when you use this, here's what you need to be thinking about. And this went on for, a, you know, this is like a 20 page template. And this is just one little screenshot of page one. But to give you an idea, I'm going to open one up here uh, and hang on. Of course, it opened up on my other screen. Let me drag it over. There we go. Let's see if we can get word to stay here. Okay, so on this one, it, obviously an antinuptial agreement, and they they consistently identified changeable text, and they identified optional text. Now they didn't say like when would I use this. Um, obviously, I could tell by reading this when you would use this, but there's a lot of stuff in here that you not you know this. I'm going to use this or I'm going to use this, but to use this template, I got to delete the stuff I don't need. And then I got to fill in the blanks and they set it up so you could just do a search and replace. And this frankly is way better than recycling an old antinuptial agreement. And if, if they come up with new language that they want to add to it, then they can come back and they've got one place to add it to. And then everybody benefits from that. It's not just the last thing that you did. So, once you get to this, once you get a gold standard, once you build something where you've consistently identified changeable text, you've identified logical inclusions or exclusions, and you've set it up correctly from a word perspective, if you just do that, you're, you're going to massively increase the efficiency of your drafting process within the firm. And you're also going to increase your accuracy. Okay. And you, and at that point, you've spent no money. You spent some time and maybe you had to get some help on how to get word to do exactly what you want and this you know that's a whole separate seminar and i'm i'm a word i'm a zen master of microsoft word there are a few of us out there um, but you can get word to do exactly what you want every single time no matter what if the document is set up correctly then when you edit the document it will respond appropriately to what you're doing you it, in, 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 so you'll never go sideways on you you'll never go why is it doing this again why is it seem like it's possessed why is the language or why is the formatting doing this crazy thing that i don't even, i didn't even do it it's doing it on its own and sometimes we'll do that if the document is set up incorrectly so all that is solvable i just want to put that out there um, once you get to a gold standard template now there's a whole bunch of other things you can do Number one, there are um, features built into Word that will allow you to, um, this is really going to be annoying. It keeps opening it on. I have three monitors, and of course, it's bringing it on the one that I can't readily get to. Um, so this one, I'm, if I click right here, this is just Word, okay? So this is a template, and if I click on this, you can see it opens up into a multiple choice. So if I hit resignation, now I'm going to hit a tab key on my keyboard. Watch this Word in the title and this word in, in the first paragraph. And hopefully you just saw them switch to the word resignation and separation. So Sarah E. A. Smith, tab, this one prefix will get all of them in the entire document. Mrs. Smith, 
tab, this one pronoun will get all of them in the entire document. Tab, vice president, effective uh, 8 1 2019. She was a faculty member and she had 30 hours of crude vacation. Documents all filled out. Mrs. Smith for herself and her heirs. Every little word change that had to occur because this was a, what did I choose? A resignation agreement and not a separation agreement and not a termination agreement or one of the other kinds. And now you can just make any further edits to it that you need to make. And because it's set up correctly from a word perspective, if I had a paragraph, guess what? The numbering works perfectly, the spacing is perfect, the formatting is perfect, and it all just works. So that's just built into Word. You know, Word has a lot of capabilities. Um, that would allow you, if you're doing simple things like filling in blanks and doing simple word changes, um, it's quite good at that. So what's your starting point for any word processor automation? You got to have a gold standard first. So you got to get that done before you can do any of these other nice things. Um, let's say you have a case management program. They all have, every single one I've ever looked at, has some method by which it can pull the client data you've piled into the program directly into documents so that you don't have to retype that stuff. So some of it is very basic, it can only fill in the blanks, and some of it is, is sophisticated and can do lists and logical inclusions and fill in the blanks and sometimes even calculate things. So this is just a screenshot of Clio, which is a very popular case management program. Um, web-based, <clears throat> and of course it has the ability to generate documents as you would expect. So if you have a case management program and you're not taking advantage of that particular functionality, that is just another low-hanging fruit, easy thing you could do. But what you know, I'm feeding the data into what? A gold standard. So I got to have something to deposit this client information into, and that something needs to be a gold standard. Again, I can't do this unless I have the first thing. Um, and then there's subscription drafting systems where you can pay X dollars a month and you get a set of templates. Typically, there's an interview involved. You answer the questions and it generates documents. Wealth Docs is a uh, very popular document automation system for estate planning lawyers that works in all 50 states in the U.S. Um, so you just tell it what state you're in and it produces documents um, compliant with your jurisdiction. <clears throat> you pay some dollar amount per year and you get this crazy list of, of templates. The drawback of a subscription drafting system is it isn't your language. So you're gonna have to just accept that um, because if you, if you generate documents really, really fast with this new system you subscribe to and you hate the way it phrases everything so you go in and spend a lot of time tweaking the language and messing with stuff, then you're, you're giving back the value proposition you were paying for in the first place. In other words, you're, you're spending more time when the idea was to spend less. So um, that's if our, our clients who have ultimately decided that subscription drafting systems just wouldn't work for them, most of them decided that not based on cost, but based upon the fact that they just couldn't tolerate the language because it wasn't theirs. So if you have documents you like and you want to keep using them and you just want to do them faster, better, more accurately, then you might want to consider the subject of this seminar, webinar, which is to add on to Microsoft Word document assembly software. Okay, so what this does, so it's your, it comes with no forms at all. That's the first point. First takeaway is document assembly software provides you with no content at all. You have to provide the content. What it allows you to do is generate your documents using your language much, much faster than you could ever have done it before. So I find this is a little um, confusing to explain, but let me just show you a couple of options. So the first thing I want to show you is a program called Hot Docs. Now they have two versions of Hot Docs. Their new version that just came out is web-based. So you create your templates on the desktop and the desktop software, but then you upload them to what's called Hot Docs Advance, and then you assemble them inside a browser. And then when you're done, you get a little download and you can download the document you just assembled. This is the desktop software, which you can still get, but of course, everybody is moving to the web because they want you to have to pay for it every month, no matter what. Um, and that's the easiest way to get that to, for you, get, get you to do that. So that's what everyone, or everyone is going that way. Anyway, so if I click in this particular firm, if I click assemble, then it's gonna open up an interview screen. And the interview screen is what you create with the software. It doesn't come with a bunch of questions. They're, these are the questions you're already asking and answering in your head whenever you generate a particular kind of document. So if I hit OK, it's going to say, you know, what kind of client do I have? An unmarried man, an unmarried woman, or a married couple? 
And then if I say it's a married couple, then you know who's going to be the grantor. And then I can, you know, I can answer first, middle, last, gender. This would handle same-sex uh, couples, of course. Um, and I work through each one of these little items that you see over here is another set of questions. So, um, so to make you not suffer while I type all these answers, I'm just going to pile in a set of answers that I did earlier. So you can just see how this kind of thing works. So, you know, I, the next thing is the address. And then I get to, um, you know, are there any kids? And if I say yes, then it's going to ask for the kids. Now, one of the things that document automation software allows you to do is gather lists of things, which is super important when it comes to legal documents because we almost always have multiple parties. You know, you got grantors and grantees. I got beneficiaries and trustees and executors, testators, et cetera. So it doesn't have to ask me how many kids I have. I just simply enter the, as long as I click add another, it'll keep taking more kids. So I enter the kids, I enter another kid, I enter another kid. It knows in this case that I have three daughters who are all adults uh, over the age of 18. Um, it knows there, the female male thing gets all the personal pronouns correctly. This is going to include the kid in my definition of children and my wife's de definition of children automatically, unless I said it was my wife's kid, in which kid, in case I would have a chance to pull that stepchild into my definition of children. But the point here is the whole interview is dynamic and it changes based upon how you answer questions. So you don't see questions which are not relevant to the fact pattern you've established. So if I said I was an unmarried person, it's not going to ask me questions about the marital fund because there isn't one. So um, it's intelligent. It's an intelligent, dynamic interview. And however many branches to the decision tree exist in your head, you, this is the codification of that. So if I go to the general trust information, it could be a restatement or it could be a new trust. What are the tax provisions? You can see, you know, if I've got each one of these little multiple choice or yes, no questions. And you can see if I say, allow taxpaying fiduciary to recover taxes, if I say no, two questions disappear. If I say yes, then for that provision to be in included in the document, I have to answer these two additional questions which just, just appeared. So the questions are whatever the questions need to be. When you get to the end, you hit go, and it's going to generate a document that is completely customized to the fact pattern that you just fed it. And it's a completely editable document. So this is plain word, no little fields, no hidden little weird things I need to warn you about. If I go to the end of a paragraph and I hit a hard return, of course, I get a paragraph number. If I hit a tab, I get a sub, 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 shift tab, back to the top. You know, this just works. You can, ed you can edit it however you want, and it'll look beautiful. Now, here's an important thing to note. If I go back to the interview and I shut down the interview, it's going to ask me if I want to save the answers to the questions. And you will always say yes to that because you've got other documents to do for the same client. So if I decided I wanted to do the will next, then I'd hit assemble. And when the interview pops up, it's going to ask me the first question it pops up is it says, do you want to use an existing answer set? And I say, yep, I'm going to use my test answers and I click OK. And now it already knows all my name my, and my wife's name. And all I got to say is, who's the testator? I am. And then I go down to general will information. It's going to be a pour over to the trust it already knows about. I'll include an interorum clause. We'll say no, go on to the tangible personal property. All these questions are pre-answered. The executor will be the spouse alone and I'll do uh, one sole executor after that and make it my daughter. And then we'll go to the guardians and we'll say soul and soul and I'll pick um, Alexis to be the guardian and the execution information. I can answer whatever I know about this. I go to the end of interview and I hit go and I'm going to get my will, and there it is. And then if I want to do my wife's will, I can go back to the same interview, and let's say she made all the same elections as me, I, who's the testator client too, and I can go to the end of interview and hit go, and I'm going to have her will. And it's going to flip everything. Wife of Jody Henley, blah, blah, blah. My family, I'm married to Baron instead of I'm married to Jody. Here are my kids blah, 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 and the, the thing is done. Save, print. And now I can flow those answers into my power of attorney, my advanced directives, and I can knock out a whole set of very sophisticated documents in about 10 minutes. 
Um, so, and again, it's your language and you would just save these documents individually. Now I wanted to show you another example. So another, um, another of the leading uh, document automation tools, just to show you how a web-based thing would, would work, is Contract Express. So again, similar approach, right? I've got an interview. It's, I'm doing another revocable trust here. Um, I click on, you know, trustees, parties, and it's just going to advance me through. You can see how the questions are presented. Substitute trustees, special business trustees, trustee options, same kind of thing. Each question is there because it controls language. And I can see my whole interview here. And Hot Docs Online looks very similar to this as well. So um, after I answer all the questions and I get to the last question and I hit save and close, then it's going to say, okay, let me generate your document for you. Here's the Baron K. Henley Revocable Trust. And when I click on it, it'll ask me where I want to save it. And I'll just save it onto my desktop. And now I'll click down here and I'll open up the custom revocable trust I just generated based on how I answered the questions in a browser. So this is a complete, this is formatted completely differently than the last one, different revocable trust. <clears throat> but like in this one, um, this particular one works with, uh, they, it has jurisdictional changes between Pennsylvania, Connecticut, New York, um, and a bunch of Florida, California. There's a whole bunch of states that one of the first questions in the interview, I probably skipped past it too fast for you to notice, was what's the state of governing law? And when I pick that, I automatically get all kinds of different nuanced language based on that jurisdiction's uh, rules. So anyway, um, you, can, you can clearly get the idea as to uh, the benefit proposition there. Let me get back to my slide deck real quick. So um, it works with Word. And there aren't any left that work with WordPerfect. The desktop version of, of Hot Docs works with WordPerfect, but none of the other ones do anymore. So if you're using WordPerfect, you're going to have to go to a web-based thing and generate. It's still going to generate Word documents, but obviously you could open those in WordPerfect. You use your language. You answer questions that you create with the software, and then the software does the heavy lifting. That's basically the process. Hey, um, Baron. He, yes. We did have a question about the answer sheet. Um, yeah. The question is, where does the answer sheet actually reside, and is it searchable? It's a yeah, that's a good question. the The answer file is an XML file, which you would store like a Word file or anything else. Um, they uh, they can be searched, and they can actually be imported into other things because XML is an open standard. It stands for Extensible Markup Language. So, and I think I believe both Hot Docs and Contract Express use XML answer files <clears throat> same concept they can use them you can use them over and over again so you can also pull from databases and depending on the program uh, and i've got a, a slide on that in just a second um, you can push back into the program some case management programs will allow you to populate fields within the database from the assembly uh, process so but the key things are you can reuse your answers you can connect to databases you can pull from databases for sure um, and a lot of case management programs have built-in links to, for example, Action Step is an online case management program that has built-in hot docs, which you can just elect to include for an additional X dollars per month. I don't know what it is, but there's some little upcharge they give you. Um, and then you get hot docs, web-based hot docs built in, and you can pull from every field in the database and generate all the documents you want. Uh, a document assembly system is an, a really amazing teaching tool. Uh, so uh, you got, you know, this is where, you know, lawyers have a common problem. I needed, I hired a new associate. I got to teach them, or I want to, I want to sell my practice, or I want to, you know, I want to expand my department. Well, you got to convey what's in your head, and a lot of times there's no way, there's, there's nothing where all that's been written down and codified. And um, this is something that you can walk people through. I didn't spend much time on it, but you can actually have help screens for each one of the screens you saw in a document assembly system to explain what I should be thinking about when I make a choice with this three option multiple choice question. I can give them all kinds of sample language. I can even, even give them hyperlinks to take them to statutes and case law if I want on the web. So it is a tremendous uh, teaching tool and way to convey what you know to other people in your firm. And ultimately, you can make changes to the system because you own it. And, and you don't have to 
a lot of these subscription ones, they say, yeah, you can you can customize it, but it's really painful to do so, or you can, many of them you just simply can't. Most are going to the web, which of course gives you the ability to assemble documents from any device connected to the internet. So you could be on an iPad, you could even do it on your phone if you wanted to, but it becomes operating system agnostic at that point. The big players are here. <clears throat> so I showed you Hot Docs and Contract Express. Uh, the form tool and Express Docs, and the form tools product is called Docsera, is what most people use, or Docsera DB. Um, so you may have heard of that, but they have a variety of tools. The form tool has various levels of uh, document automation software. You can check it out on their website. Um, but the Hot Docs kind of invented the market 30 something years ago. And you know, there's a lot of competitors now because this is game changing technology, as you can imagine. Um, you know, why Aaron? are. Yes. We do have one hot docs question and that was yeah. can we still get hot docs desktop program without subscribing to web based? Um yes. So yeah, yeah uh, well you can still get hot docs desktop but you can't get it without subscribing. So uh the new owners of hot docs decided that even on the desktop software you're going to have to pay x dollars per month in order to get the software. Um, I wish I could tell you exactly what that number is per month, but I can't because um, it really depends on what you negotiate with them and how long of a time period you sign up for. We've had people get from as low as $35 a month up to $70 a month. Um, and I, I, you know, and I've complained about this to them. <laughs> it would be nice to know what the pricing is. Uh, and they've assured me that they're going to change that up and make it more transparent. Uh, but to this point, it's, it hasn't become that. Um, anyway, you can still get the desktop software, and but you are going to have to pay monthly for it, even though it assembles documents on your computer and not in the web. And I should point out that if you decided to go to the web version, um, you pay, I believe it's $350 per month flat fee to get the web uh, assembly option, but your templates that you build on HotDocs desktop will move over with no modification very likely into the web version. So if you decide you want to go that route and pay the extra 350, it's that's not per user, that's per firm, uh, the 350 per firm, uh, then you would be able to assemble those same templates uh, on their web version. And the new desktop replacement is called Hot Docs Author, which is actually pretty cool and has some really cool development tools that I am I'm actually very excited to start using. But Hot Docs Advance unfortunately at this point doesn't handle answer files the way I just showed you the desktop version does. So we are waiting for version 2.0 uh, when they get that fixed so that you know we and our clients would be able to use the web version the same way they use the desktop version. Anyway, um, so templates, this is capturing your intellectual capital into a reusable form. Um, I would argue one of the most important objectives of any law office. Uh, you know, don't recreate the wheel, uh, use what you've already built and, and share it and, and, and create something that you can come back to and improve over time. And that's what document automation systems allow you to do. If you just do word processor stuff that we talked about initially, super inexpensive, easy to do. And, you know, the best bang for your technology dollar, frankly, is to learn how to use stuff you already own, like Microsoft Word, which I find most people have no idea how to control and don't understand what's going on behind the curtain and can't get it to do what they want all the time and waste all kinds of non-billable time uh, wrestling with it. That is avoidable. Um, if you come up with templates, then all those margins for error we previously discussed, they are largely eliminated. So that's a, a major step forward. If you think about what's causing you stress in your life as a lawyer, isn't when someone's yelling at you because you owe them something, isn't it often a document they owe you? Yeah, for most people it is. So if you could do that faster, better, you're actually going to be happier. And I know most people don't think about software as having the ability to give someone a, a little bit of happiness, but it actually can do that if you can keep up. Um, a lot of the transactional stuff now has gone to flat fee. Uh, and as a result, you know, practitioners are feeling pressure to reduce the amount of time. We're not rewarded for that anymore. In a highly competitive legal market, slow lawyers are penalized, not rewarded. Uh, and there's a, there's too much competition out there and there's too much information out there thanks to the internet. So people are researching and they're, they're finding uh, low cost competitors. 
you can imagine if I could do all this stuff faster, this is the major bottleneck in almost every law office is the drafting process. So if I can improve that, it raises the bar for everybody. Sharing what you know with other people, this is a place to convey that, to deposit that information and then convey it to others. Um, there's a whole generation of lawyers, which I'm sure everyone in this webinar is aware of, who didn't grow up with this stuff. And they feel like they've got to rely on a support staff person in order to get documents the final mile. And as you saw, that's not required. If you have, if you have a document automation system built, a person who is a terrible typist and knows nothing about the word processor can still generate perfect documents. You could two finger type in the answers to the questions or even use like Dragon uh, Naturally Speaking and speak the answers, which it will type for you. And that does work. We, we have done that before. So uh, you could wean yourself of being reliant upon other people if, if you are right now. And ultimately, uh, you can crank out more work without adding more people. And obviously, the number one cost of every law office in the world is, is payroll. Um, your new employees would ramp up faster. And if your templates are built correctly, then the formatting just works. And you don't have to understand like how that was put together in the first place. It's just refreshing to use a document that when you make changes to it, it does what you would expect it to do in the perfect world and not some crazy thing that you have to figure out how to fix. So the case for automation, um, you own it. You don't have to learn a new system. You don't have to swallow somebody else's language. There's going to be maybe a software cost uh, on a recurring basis, but it's not going to be nearly as expensive as a whole subscription system is. Um, these are real examples, but I just want to give you a couple to think about. So a flat fee, $2,000 for, this is a real firm. Uh, this is maybe 10 years ago now. <clears throat> Took them 10 hours to complete a set of documents. They had seven lawyers and one support staff person in their firm. Um, and so the lawyers were doing all the work themselves. And so their pre-automation effective hourly rate was only $200 an hour. And after automation, they, they compressed the 10 hours down to 1.5 hours. They went to a flat fee of $2,000. Um, previously, that's they would base it basically on hours, but you know they, they stuck to that number no matter what. So it was really a flat fee. Anyway, it's not unusual for a firm to be generating you know, $1,333 an hour if they can go to a flat fee and they can just do it much, much faster and, and uh, more accurately than they did before. Even something uh, where you, you're saving only a couple of minutes over and over every day can also yield huge results, right? So in this case, uh, standard correspondence, they can make on administrative time $2,700 an hour, uh, and that is perfectly fine so long as it's in your operating or in your engagement agreement. And um, that's another, so don't just think about this like, oh, I could save eight hours in this thing I do once a week. It, it, could, it applies everywhere. If you could, if you can save five minutes several times a day, you're going to have a, a major improvement, and every little thing helps. So um, we're, we're uh, already out of time. I have uh, more examples and reasons why you should do this, but I think basically uh, it, it comes down to, the, I don't think this is optional anymore. Um, if, you're, if your job is to crank out complicated, sophisticated documents, this has to be on your radar. And every other professional service industry has had to adopt the technology that exists to allow them to do their jobs more efficiently. And document automation software is that tool for lawyers. Now, the precursor to doing any of it is creating templates in the first place and pulling your content together. Now, you could outsource that to somebody else, but if you can do it yourself in the first place, even if you outsource the automation to somebody else, you're going to significantly reduce your costs and the time necessary to create, complete the project because you pulled together the content in the first place. And even if you only ever pull together the content into gold standard templates, as we talked about earlier, then you've still made a significant step forward compared to where you were previously if you're recycling old documents. So um, I'll, I'll end it there since we're gonna try to limit this to 30 minutes. I just wanted to let you know, um, we have the Affinity Hot Docs Academy, August 1st and 2nd in Columbus. That's on Hot Docs Desktop. And by the way, if you decide to go to Hot Docs 
author and Hot Docs Advanced or web version, everything you learn in Hot Docs Academy will transfer over to that because Hot Docs Author is very, 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 very similar to Hot Docs Desktop. So if you're interested in learning how to do it yourself, then uh, check out the URL that's on your screen. And thank you very much for attending. Great, thank you, Baron. Um, we do have two questions, if you don't mind. Yeah, um, Brad, Brad says um, he's been using, he's used uh, the form tool some, and mm -hmm. he wondered what your experience was with that for document assembly. The form tool is solid. It's just that the interview is static. So as you know, if you use the form tool, it's just a bunch of questions at the bottom of the screen. If they're irrelevant, you have to just know they're irrelevant and ignore them. There's no way to like make them show up or not show up. Um, I don't like it, it's, the form tool can do everything in terms of generating lists, calculating things. It can do very sophisticated things with the documents. The price point is super attractive, and I I totally understand that. It's no it's no easier to automate in than in any other um, of the programs because we know all of them. Uh, but you know it does cost less upfront. So, you know, there's if you're if you're using it already and you like what it's doing, there's no reason not to continue using it. And as long as the person using it understands what questions are relevant and which ones that require answers and which ones don't, then it's a great tool. Excellent. And uh, we have one last question from Karen, uh, who asks, what is your favorite document assembly software and why? Well, you know, I'm I'm biased because I've been coding in hot docs for over 22 years. I mean, I automated my own private practice even earlier than that, 26, seven years ago, I automated my own private practice using hot docs. So I've been using that for a really long time. So it's kind of like a second language to me. Um, but having learned all of the other tools, I still think hot docs may be the most elegant in terms of it gives me a, a set of tools that I can just use. Um, the code is easy to read in the template itself. Um, but, um, you know, right now it's kind of, I'd like to use their web version, but I can't because it's version 1.0 and they don't have the answer file thing all worked out yet. Um, and that's really important to me. So hard question to answer. I really like contract express. I've been doing a, a lot with that and express docs also definitely merits consideration, super powerful. Um, just not as well known in North America as, as the alternatives, but also very competitively priced. Great. Thank you, Baron. Uh, you certainly have made a really good case for uh, document assembly, document management. So thank you. Thank you. Great job. And uh, thanks to all of you for attending. As Baron mentioned, uh, we have a special thank you for attending today. We're happy to share with all of you a special 20% discount for attending um, our Affinity Hot Docs Academy, which happens August 1st and 2nd at our Columbus, Ohio headquarters. I'll be sending you that link too, so you don't have to try to grab it off that screen. Um, and of course, if you have any questions, just ask. Um, and if you are intrigued by Baron's intro to document automation today, I hope you'll join us for our Q&A webinar for document automation with our producers of Docs After Dark podcast, Jeff Schoenberger and John Federico. Um, that's coming up on April 13th, uh, but we have lots of webinars available. Just jump onto affinityconsulting.com slash webinars, and I hope you'll join us again soon. Watch for my follow-up email coming to you shortly with today's recording, and please do share your feedback with us on the survey that follows. Thanks, everyone.